This is the second video in a two-part series about graphing. In the last video, we saw that it was possible to find out something about velocity from the position versus time plot and something about acceleration from the velocity versus time plot. In this video, I want to talk about the reverse of that process. Given a velocity versus time plot, is it possible to find a position versus time plot? I want to build to the answer by starting with a really simple example. This is a plot of velocity versus time where the velocity is constant, and as a reminder, that means the thing is cruising along a straight line without speeding up or slowing down. Remember that average velocity is defined as change in position over change in time, and turning that around, change in position is going to be equal to average velocity times the time interval. Of course, for this plot, velocity is constant, so the average velocity is the velocity. And if I pick any time interval, the average velocity times the time is going to be equal to the change in position, or the displacement. In other words, it's the area of that rectangle. Even if the plot is not a straight line, you can still find the displacement by finding the area under the curve. Obviously, this rectangle doesn't fit very well, but if you make the rectangle really skinny, the time interval is very short. And with such a short time interval, the velocity will be very nearly constant. If you pick any velocity on that short time interval, it will be pretty darn close to the average velocity on the time interval. So the area will be a pretty close approximation of the displacement, and the skinnier the rectangle is, the better the approximation will be. For a longer time interval, just put together a bunch of skinny rectangles. The sum of the areas of the rectangles will be equal to the total displacement over the time interval. So even if the plot of velocity versus time is curvy, the area under the curve for a given time interval is equal to its displacement. You might be thinking, how in the world am I going to find the area under that curve? The answer is that for any straight line plot, you can use simple geometry to find the area under a curve. And for curvier plots, there's a technique in calculus called integration that will help. If you've already had integration, you know how to do this, and I'll touch on this in an example at the end of the video. If you haven't seen integration yet, it's no big deal. There are still plenty of examples where you can find areas without calculus. We can make the very same argument for finding change in velocity from an acceleration versus time plot. Average acceleration is defined as the change in velocity over change in time. That means that the change in velocity over a given time interval is equal to the average acceleration multiplied by the change in time. Even with a curvy acceleration versus time plot, it's reasonable to approximate change in velocity over a short time interval with the area of a rectangle. And over a longer time interval, adding the areas of a series of rectangles will give the change in velocity. In other words, the area under the acceleration versus time plot is the change in velocity over a given time interval. With these things in mind, let's take a look at an example to see how all of this is applied. Here's a velocity versus time plot, and this is for a moving car. Looking at the plot, you can see that the car starts with negative velocity, slows to a stop, and then begins moving forward with increasing speed. The velocity versus time plot is a straight line, so acceleration is constant. It might seem like kind of an odd motion for a car, but it isn't unheard of. This is actually a pretty good model for a car coasting in reverse up a hill, stopping momentarily, and then coasting back down again. So there are two things to do here. First, given this plot, can you determine the displacement of the car in each of the first four seconds? And second, assuming the initial position is one meter, can you draw the position versus time plot for the first four seconds of motion? The first part of this question asks us to find displacement during each of the first four seconds, which means we'll need to calculate some areas. During the first second, the area under the curve is here. Notice that one unit of the grid has side lengths one second and two meters per second. So the area of one grid unit is two meters. The area under the curve during that first second is below the x-axis, so it's going to be negative. It contains one and a half of those units, so the area is negative three meters. Between one and two seconds, the area is here, and that area is negative one meter. Between two and three seconds, the area is above the x-axis, so that displacement is going to be positive one meter. And finally, between three and four seconds, the displacement is positive three meters. Let's move those up because I'll use them again when I do the next part of the question, which is to plot position versus time. We are told in the question that the initial position is one meter. In the first second, the displacement is minus three, so that means that t equals one second, the position should be one minus three meters or minus two meters. 
In the next second, the displacement is minus one meter, so at t equals two seconds, the position should be minus three meters. Then over the next second, the displacement is plus one meter, which brings the object back to position minus two meters. And in the last second, the displacement is plus three meters, which brings the object back to position plus one meter. It's sort of cool to note that at second four, the car has returned to the starting position. If you look back at the velocity versus time plot, you can see that this makes sense because there are equal areas above and below the x-axis in the first four seconds. So the displacement over that four second interval should be zero and the object should return to its starting point at t equals four seconds. You could subdivide the intervals to add more points to the plot if you wanted to, and it would soon become clear that the shape of this plot is a parabola. The last thing I want to do with this example is to show you explicitly how this problem can be done with integration. If you haven't gotten to integration yet, you should feel free to skip this part of the movie and come back to it later. Let's take another look at the velocity versus time plot. It has a slope of two and a y-intercept of negative four, so the equation for this line should be v of t is equal to two t minus four. The displacement between any two times can be found by finding the definite integral. For example, between two and three seconds, delta x is the integral from two to three of the quantity two t minus four dt. This is equal to the quantity t squared minus four t evaluated from two to three, which is equal to nine minus 12 minus the quantity four minus eight, which is equal to one meter. And it better be because the area under the curve is definitely one meter on that interval. If you're looking for a more general equation for position as a function of time, you need an indefinite integral. So x of t is the integral of 2t minus 4 dt, which is t squared minus 4t plus a constant. Don't forget the constant. When t is equal to 0, x is equal to 1 meter. That was given to us in the problem. So c is 1, and x of t is t squared minus 4t plus 1. This is exactly the parabola we found on the last slide, as it should be. Once you have a chance to practice these concepts, you can check out the movie on the constant acceleration equations. In that movie, I'll derive a set of equations that can be used for a very specific case where an object has constant acceleration. Because there are so many cases where objects have constant acceleration, these equations turn out to be super useful.